same tunes again. Anyway, hello. No. Hi, it's still me, Dave Green from Fakebit Polytechnic. And you join us again. I think you've probably seen the point where we had one of these um, 15 quid uh, Rock Band uh, 3 uh, keyboards. It's a brilliant MIDI controller as well. And we've plugged it into a, basically a £10 Nano uh, that's got, I mean, there are additional components there. But they're mostly to get rid of the, um, the 16 kilohertz carrier tone, which is otherwise quite hard pitched. But, but beyond the, um, the, the hearing of most adults, so that's a bonus. Um, where we were last time, uh, I mean, the brilliant thing about the Arduino is obviously you can reprogram it. Um, we're using this Mozzie sound th synthesis library, which has done most, most of the hard work for you. I don't really understand either C++ or <laughs> audio synthesis, but fortunately I've been able to just mess around with the code that's already there. What we had last time was this kind of FM patch, so it starts off with a, a basic tone. Increasingly dramatic vibrato, and I think I was... I think I was messing around at the top, the top end of here. Oh! So crazy. Which re reminded me very much of those kind of Dalek things from Robotron that made yeah. that kind of screeching noise that can't And that, one, one of the big um, features of this thing, from my point of view, is that it's... Um, Dave it's, Bate behind the camera. Yeah, it's, like, it's lo-fi nature gives it a, <laughs> like a crazy and character. So, and and, and occasionally, uh, occasionally unpredictable. So I'm using about, let's call them oscillators. They're just kind of uh, frequency uh, wave tables. Um, and so I wanted to see what else I could do just combining those, those uh, same ones. So that's our FM sound again. Um, if I change to a different, what I'm calling a patch, I think this is... Um, so that's just, a, again, a basic square wave. But if I bring, again, bring in a harmonic. Sounds a bit more exciting. And I think on this, oh. that's actually, that's what I'm calling the duty cycle, which is how I've chopped up the other sine wave on top of it. Oh, yeah. Portamento on that one. This one is just. Uh, I mean, the on the one on the. That's on the, good. That's very electron. Um, on the wavetables, it says it's a triangle. Uh, Dave behind the camera says it doesn't sound like a triangle. No, I think maybe uh, it's clipped, what, Dave. Maybe you it's, think it's, it's got, clipped. Maybe, or... Could it be a sawtooth? Well, yeah. I, it sounds <laughs> more. It sounds very <laughs> dead mouse. It sounds quite sawtooth. And uh, what the the gimmick I've done with this one. Uh, again, you can have longer portamento. Which is nice. And this one's polyphonic. Oh. Polyphonic with a kind of fake chorus oh. by detuning one of the top ones. So that's like a really slow LFO, low frequency oscillator. And uh, yeah, and it What's is. What's crazy about that is that you don't. Each individual note. Monophonic is very flat. When you play two against each other, suddenly it all flattens up. Down, like, yeah, so you can still switch between octaves using the um, the standard guitar controls. It's <laughs> alright. Um, I'm not very good at playing the keyboard, but yeah, you can. Um, and you <laughs> And in fact, you can't change the harmonics on those. The, um, and then finally, the other patch I thought, because you can do all these binary operations very easily in C, um, I thought, why don't I take the square wave I've got and the sine wave I've got and just awe the binary of them together. And it, and it sounds a little bit grainier. It's um, that's good. And then, um, because again, I'm kind of introducing a slight detune with this pitch bend controller here. Can you <laughs> That was the easiest way I could get an LFO effect on that. What I didn't realise is I, I failed to switch one of them off when I, when I uh, transferred this across to my kind of polyphonic code 
It's only two note poly polyphony, but I'm calling it polyphonic. So if I do this, I think one of them will be all right. If I hit the other one, oh no, I've done the wrong thing. It sounds all right initially. It's kind of, it's obviously kind of building up to something. I'm still getting this is a very slow build here. That's mental. Echo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Emerson, Lake and Palm. Oh, it's No, stopped. I'm sorry, oh. but that, that one note is worth the price. It can go fast, you see. I'm kind of controlling. There you go. I'm controlling the speed. And that, that little that little high-speed artifact at the top is um, exactly similar to a, a, a patch on the MC303. So I don't know if that's something that Roland wanted to do or it's just something that you get when you play wavetables back at very fast frequencies. But to me, right, the key thing about this is that this is one program that yeah, Dave's written this is, for the I, Arduino. This is less than 30 kilobytes and about a quarter of that is just samples of sine waves and square waves which and you do. you can write as many programs as you want and replace that program with what you want to do. So you kind of get, start to get a feeling for how flexible it is, even though it's dirt cheap. You might be, you might be sitting at home going, "Wow, well, you know, even for thirty pounds, I would, I would require an instrument that allows me to do." I, I'd, I'd require, I, I'd want. Why isn't it? Why, why aren't both of those notes polyphonic? I don't know. I mean, I do know. It's in the code. Seven minutes. I can almost control that. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it. So, but yeah, but and if you've got sounds that you want us to make out of it, let us know, and we will. We will not. I, I almost guarantee we will not make the sounds that you have asked us to make. We will make a sound that is even better than what you requested by so, accident. <laughs> so that there's there's the challenge. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Is it off? Possibly.